Today, we'll be performing examination of the thyroid and I'll be walking you through each of its steps. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Shahzeb. May I know your name, please? Ahmed. All right, Ahmed. For this examination, I need to examine your eyes, your neck, and your hands. And I'll be needing exposure of these areas. Is that okay with you? Yeah. And I'll also be using my hands and stethoscope to feel these parts. You will not feel any discomfort or pain during this examination. If you do so, kindly let me know. Shall we begin now? Examination of the thyroid involves four components. Assessment of the neck, the hands, the eyes, and some components of the motor system. We'll be doing each separately and I'll be walking you through it. We'll begin with inspecting the neck on all sides to look for any abnormal swelling, any pulsatile masses, or any surgical scar marks or pigmentation changes. We'll look at all sides of the neck. Can you turn to that side for me? And now to this side. We also need to do two special tests for swellings in the neck that are the tongue protrusion test and sorrowing test. Can you protrude your tongue out for me? If a swelling moves on protrusion of the tongue, it means it is attached to the hyoid bone, most likely a thyroglossal cyst. Can you swallow a sip of water for me now? A swelling that moves with swallowing or deglutition is indicative of a thyroid. So now we'll move on to palpation. Before palpation of the neck, we need to ask if their patient has pain at any site. Do you have pain anywhere in your neck? The ideal way of palpation is palpating from behind, but some components can be done anteriorly as well. We need to first locate the location of the thyroid gland. This is done by using a finger running down the midline. We'll run it down and we'll assess for a prominence. The first prominence that we feel is the Adam's apple or the thyroid cartilage. We'll move further down from it and we will face a depression. This depression is the cricothyroid membrane. Further down is the cricoid cartilage and right below it lies the isthmus of the thyroid gland. This is a common confusion among students as they palpate the thyroid much higher. But the ideal palpation should be here. So now we can palpate both lobes of the thyroid gland anteriorly as well. If you we are unable to palpate it, we can keep one hand steady and push from the other side to palpate the lobe. We'll do the same for the other side. During palpation, we can ask the patient to swallow as well to assess for movement. Can you swallow? If the lobes are prominent, they will be felt on palpation. Once this is done, we can now move to posterior. We'll now palpate the neck from behind. For palpation of the neck from behind, we'll follow the same protocol and trace the origin of the thyroid gland. Once we have done that, We'll palpate for both lobes. Can you swallow for me? And assess for movement with swallowing. We'll also look for any nodules, any consistency, and for enlargement of the thyroid. Once that is done, we can now ask the patient to relax themselves and flex their neck for assessment of the lymph nodes. Now palpate the lymph nodes of the patient, starting with some mint. Can you flex your neck slightly for me? Moving to some mandibular. The parotid. Preauricular. Postauricular. Jugulodigastric nodes. And then the anterior cervical chain. Similarly, the posterior cervical chain. And finally, the occipital nodes on the back. We can also assess for the supraclavicular nodes by asking the patient to shrug as you push deep inside the supraclavicular fossa. Can you shrug for me? Thank you. Shrug it down. That completes the lymph node examination. To check for tracheal deviation due to an enlarged thyroid mass, we use the three finger method. We put two of our fingers on the edges of the clavicles and use the middle finger to assess downward medial location of the trachea. We can also assess the sides, looking if we can go beneath, between the trachea and the sternocleidomastoid. 
if you're able to do so, the trachea is midline. We can also assess for this crequesternal distance in this and a tracheal tug by asking the patient to inspire. Can you inspire? If their finger is pulled inside and it causes a tug, this is a positive tracheal tug. In cases of enlarged thyroid, we need to check for a thyroid brui. This is done with the bell of a stethoscope, placing it right over the isthmus and also over the lobes. One final assessment that we need to do in a thyroid examination is presence of a retrosternal goiter. To assess that, we percuss the retrosternal region. If the percussion note is resonant, which is normal, it indicates a normal thyroid gland and lack of retrosternal extension. That's it. To elicit the Pemberton sign, we'll ask the patient to raise both their arms up above the head and look for facial swelling. Facial swelling or facial flushing will indicate superior vena cavall obstruction, either by an enlarged thyroid or an obstructing mass in the lungs. We now need to do the hand examination. In the hand examination, we check for changes in the digits and changes in the nail, which are indicative of thyroid acropachy. We can also assess for the palmar arrhythmia on the palmar side and assess for sweat, hyperhidrosis. Once that is done, we can check for both the pulses to see for any bounding pulses which are seen in thyrotoxicosis. That completes the relevant examination of the hands. To assess for a fine tremor in the hands, we can use an A4 paper and we can put it over the hands when they are at the same level. These need to be outstretched for a proper assessment. And now we look at movement of the paper. Slight movement of the paper is normal, but exaggerated movements indicates a fine tremor. Now for examination of the eyes relevant to the thyroid, we need to check for eye movements. We need to assess for lid retraction and lid lag and any exophthalmos present. For eye movements, we use the H maneuver. Can you focus on this finger? Now track this finger with your eyes without moving your head. Perfect. Now we'll assess for lid lag. To assess for lid lag, we'll track the eye movement from up to down slowly using our finger. Can you track the finger for me? Exophthalmos can be assessed from the side of the patient as well as from behind. From behind, we need to ask the patient to slightly extend their neck and look out for bulging of the eyeballs. This also evaluates exophthalmos. We'll now examine for some reflexes. First, we'll assess for the brachioradial reflex. This is done by locating the brachioradialis tendon and striking our hammer gently over it. Once that is done, we'll look for the biceps reflex. This is done by locating the biceps tendon and putting our finger over it so that it does not cause damage or pain to the patient. We'll now strike our hammer over the finger. It is important that we look at the muscle belly during this because we cannot elicit a proper reflex all the time. An assessment of the belly will help us look at the reflex. That's it for the triceps reflex. We locate the triceps belly behind the elbow and just strike slightly below it over the tendon. That's the triceps reflex. Another key component of assessing the thyroid status in a patient is assessment of the proximal myopathy. For that, I'll instruct the patient on how to stand using his hip girdle muscles without using his arms. If he's able to do this successfully, this is a reliable sign of lack of proximal myopathy or good muscle strength. So now, can you do this for me, please? And can you stand now? Perfect. Thank you. This completes the thyroid examination. Thank you for your cooperation.